was great. Um, hi all, welcome to our Smart Mobility Hub panel event. I'm Jamie Cudden, I lead the Smart City Programme in Dublin City Council and hope you enjoyed the little video at the start. And I love just to see all the logos that who we're working with on this project. It's, it's a true collaboration and it's really made possible uh, by working across, I suppose, local government, across industry and getting really cool companies to innovate with us and we're working with researchers to look at how we evaluate what we're doing. And it's a, it's a really exciting project. I lead a kind of a portfolio of quite a number of projects, over 100 projects. And for me, this is one that's, uh, that, that's just really close to my heart in terms of what we can achieve when we join up, uh, I suppose, best of brightest minds together, a little bit of co-funding, solving a challenge. Um, how do we reduce uh, congestion and how do we address and promote sustainable mobility uh, in our city? And, and really the idea came about four years ago when we were you know, talking to staff and you know, talking to uh, people across the four local authorities and understanding some of the challenges that they face. And one of the things we, we heard was that you know, when you're in work, you know, how do you do site visits? And, and we were thinking about, well, we have bikes, we have electric bikes, we've got cars, electric cars. How could we knit that together into a service that's really accessible for staff? and something that could really reduce the need for staff to bring in cars if you have to do site visits and help reduce emissions and be part of the, I suppose, the climate uh, story, how we're addressing uh, climate action. So I'm delighted to um, have a fantastic uh, panel. You know, some of our partners, uh, you've got Nifty Business, we've got Bleeper Bike, we've got University College Dublin, and uh, we've got Enterprise Ireland speaking today. But before we uh, kick off properly, I'm gonna hand over uh, to the Lord Mayor, Alison uh, Gill Gilliand, and I'm absolutely delighted uh, to have her you know, here today and supporting what we're trying to achieve on this initiative. And I'm sure, Lord Mayor, you've been super busy because this is all part of Climate Action Week. I know there's been a hell of a lot of events and uh, really delighted uh, that you're able to contribute to the session today. So thanks very much. You're very welcome, Jamie. It's my absolute pleasure. Um, and just to reiterate, Jamie's welcome to everybody here on this webinar. Um, I'm delighted to be part of the webinar and of course of Climate Action Week and this particular launch of phase two of our smart mobility hub. As Jamie has indicated there, there's lots of events on this week, over 95 in fact, and most of them are inspired by the need for sustainable change. And this is very much central to the work of Dublin City Council. And indeed, my role as Lord Mayor, as one of my priorities, is to support the implementation of our Climate Action Plan. The challenge, as we all know, is enormous. It requires a joined up system wide uh, approach. Collaboration is key and we need to lead by example. Uh, equally, we also need to be experimental and innovative open to new ideas, to changing our thinking, changing our approaches as to how we do our business. And this is why I want to add my recognition as Lord Mayor and support this project, the Smart Mobility Hub. It's a collaboration across public, private and research sectors, and it seeks to address real challenges while also creating new business opportunities as part of the Small Business Innovation Research Programme from Enterprise Ireland. All the partners are so passionate and so committed to making change happen and building on the tools to make it a reality. We've already seen many successful innovations, for example, the one highlighted there by Jamie, the idea of, of staff having access to book e-bikes and e-cars to support sustainable workplace trips, site visits, like that makes so much sense. So such innovations are a true example of our remit as council representatives to work with the community to co-design solutions alongside them. This project is an amalgamation of voices from leadership and staff across multiple councils, commercial businesses, GTS, Nissan, Bleeper Bike, Nifty Business, in addition to researchers and data analysis at UCD, with the support, of course, of Science Foundation Ireland and other government agencies. So partnerships ensure buy-in, but they also ensure behaviour change, and these projects tick both those boxes. For Dublin City Council, we must also examine the way we do our business 
and our work. We cannot be advocates for change without embracing change ourselves. And this is why this project is so important. It's not about telling others what to do. It's about starting with ourselves and being a real part of the innovation. Therefore, this is the innovation to all local councils and other workplaces. Sorry, this is the invitation to all local councils and other workplaces to look internally. To what extent are we contributing to carbon emissions, to traffic congestions in our day-to-day -day work? Can we take action to mitigate this? Are we do everything we can? So I hope the results of this pilot helps our learning of what works and how to increase its scale, as I'd be delighted to see the programme scale to other workplaces across Dublin and beyond, and that employers and employees would embrace this concept. So finally, I'd like to commend the Smart Dublin programme, DCC, Fingal, and most importantly, the staff within our councils who are delivering and supporting projects like this and helping us to realise our climate ambition. Our job is to guarantee a sustainable future for our cities and our citizens. And this job has begun and continues and will continue long into the future. I look forward to the rest of the webinar, to using Smart Mobility Hub whenever I get a chance, and to see what new projects will pave the way for our cities in the future. Thank you, and back to you, Jamie. That's great, Lord Mayor. Thank you so much for such an inspiring uh, speech, and I completely agree with you that you know we have to be seen to be leading, as, as opposed to telling people what to do. We need to lead the way, and I suppose inspire others, and that's why this project is is something that's really important for us. And I think what's, what's important to highlight as well is, is that this project, you know, we didn't just say, this is the solution that, that we want uh, to, 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 to get for, for Dublin City Council or the local authorities. We actually put a challenge out to the market uh, a couple of years ago under this partnership with Enterprise Ireland. And it, Enterprise Ireland had this really interesting model for how they can encourage public sector to innovate and support amazing local entrepreneurs and businesses to kind of, I suppose, co-innovate solutions that can solve problems uh, for public sector. And we've been working with Enterprise uh, Ireland uh, for a number of years. I think we've, we've supported 40 plus projects on this innovative model um, and, and co-funding uh, approach. And I'm gonna hand over to Paul McGuire in Enterprise Ireland to, you know, Paul, we've, we've uh, really benefited from this as, as have other public sectors. So it'd be fantastic to hear a little bit more about your perspective and how you're how you're growing this uh, approach across public sector and supporting it uh, through Enterprise Ireland. Thank you, Jamie. Uh, good afternoon, Lord Mayor, colleagues and guests. On behalf of Enterprise Ireland, I'm delighted to be invited to speak here today at the Smart Mobility Hub webinar. Uh, in the next three slides, I hope to provide a very quick overview as to what Small Business Innovation and Research, SBIR, is, why it exists and where it came from to deliver the excellent results you'll be hearing about today as to this initiative. Uh, next slide, thank you. Uh, SBIR, which is more generally known in the EU as PCP, pre-commercial procurement, is a vehicle by which public bodies can develop solutions in tandem with industry that they need, but they cannot currently find in the marketplace. The genesis of this was that the same named SBIR program in the US that was launched back in 1982 and has been very successful engaging small companies in delivering solutions to the US federal and state governments. So much so that they would state that for every $1 invested in SBIR has had a return of some $15 to the US taxpayer. The EU followed suit in 2006 with the launch of the PCP, pre-commercial procurement vehicle, and early adopters such as the UK and the Netherlands have enjoyed the same wins as the US, if not quite at the same le level yet. Selling to the public sector can be daunting at the best of times, but even more so for SMEs. PCP, SBIR is there to facilitate this. With some 50% of the EU economy being public procurement, it is just too large to ignore. Equally, the EU realized that there was a need to stimulate more research and development in public procurement, as is evident in that the US invests some 20 times more. Sadly, to date, the public procurement is still very much dominated by large enterprise and cross-border public procurement in the EU is still shockingly low at 1.7%. It would seem that French government departments like to buy French and German municipalities will favour German suppliers. PCP, SBIR is changing this by getting one, more SMEs to engage with public bodies, two, 
uh, and more so across the European Union. Next slide. Thank you. Um, the specific Enterprise Ireland SBIR program was launched in 2016, and to date we have run some 24 challenges across 20 public bodies with some 50 participating companies, some of which we'll be presenting here today. To date, some 3.4 million euros have been invested. The themes of these challenges are vary across from health to mapping seaweed beds around the coast of Ireland to providing a better service to people with mobility challenges on public transport. Key attributes as to the SBR challenge are that one, the contract is 100% funded, i.e. the company does not need to bring a financial participation to the table and as such is of a less of a financial strain on an SME. As you can see in the graphic, uh, the public body is actually supporting multiple strands of innovation, not just picking one company to deliver a solution. I.e., in this example, you can see the five companies have engaged in the challenge, each one tackling the ask in different ways. As they progress, the public body may choose to refine the group to select maybe three or two for a second phase, as their suggested approach would be more in line with the needs of the public body. The participating companies retain the intellectual property developed so as to be able to monetize their work to other public bodies, both national and international. Clearly, having a valuable reference site with a public body such as Dublin County Council opens doors in other jurisdictions, both national and international. It is important to stress that at the end of an SBR challenge, the public body will need to tender out to the market for the solution, as required by EU procurement regulations. The hope would be, though, that the company that has now developed the solution, with all the bells and whistles the public body requires, would be in pole position to win that larger contract. Next slide. Thank you. So, in summary, as stated, an SBR challenge involves two distinct phases a first phase or a proof of concept phase, following which a more substantial second phase where a prototype, a working solution will be developed. A typical challenge budget would range from between 200 to 300,000 euros and a participating company who delivers both on phase one and phase two may envisage some 60 to 80,000 in income during the course of the challenge, which on average is around about 18 months. Next slide. So uh, I hope this general overview has shed some light on what is SBIR, Small Business Innovation and Research. And I believe that uh, it will become more apparent now as my colleagues take you through the specific Smart Mobility Hub Challenge. Thank you again. And I say, how may I just say again, how delighted Enterprise Ireland are to be partnered with Smart Dublin here today during Dublin Climate Action Week. Thank you. That's great, Paul. Thanks so much for that overview. And it's not too often that you use the words innovation and procurement in the same uh, presentation. So we, we're absolutely delighted to support this. And I, I think what, what we really like is giving opportunities to companies and to entrepreneurs to work with us um, and solve some of these uh, challenges. And I suppose, you know, you looked at the timeline, 18 to 24 months, we, we did have a bit of a blip in the middle uh, with COVID, which kind of uh, uh, delayed us a little bit, but now we're right back on track. So. One of the, I suppose, when we went through the process, we we ended up working, as as Paul said, in phase one with a number of companies, and you know that we, we we saw what we liked, and and then we kind of refined that to the next phase. And what we're talking about today is the phase two of the project, and and I suppose the company that that pitched and really impressed us over over the duration of the, of this project is who we're going to hear from now, and we're going to hear from Richard Duty from uh, Good Travel Software. And, and really the challenge we, we, we put out to the market was, you know, how can you knit all these services together um, using a piece of software that's really easy to use, that's scalable and can transfer and deliver the service in any local authority or business globally. So Richard stepped up and his team and what was amazing is that they're based up in the digital hub, the stones throw, delivering these services all over the world and not doing any work in Dublin. So we had to change that and uh, absolutely delighted to hand over to Richard, who's the chief operating officer in uh, Good Travel Software. So, so Richard, handing over to you. Hi there guys, um, thanks for that, Jamie. Um, yeah, so just to maybe introduce myself, I'm the COO of Good Travel Software, and we are a mobility technology company. Um, we are founded and based in Dublin, but we operate globally. So we'd have uh, very extensive operations in Latin America, in the US, in Canada, across Europe and Australia. And we provided, we work in a number of areas in mobility technology. Um, public car sharing would be one of them. So that would be 
the likes of uh, Yuko on street car sharing here in Dublin. Um, we work in corporate car sharing, which is quite similar to some of the work that we're doing in the smart mobility hub. And indeed, we're, we're using that to um, drive that sector of our business uh, internationally. And we do an awful lot of work in stop and route optimization for bus services. So for school bus runs, um, we look at how you optimize and reduce the number of uh, stops, which reduces the number of buses you need and uh, leads to better carbon outcomes in that regard. So if it's in the space of data, if it's in the space of technology and mobility, they're the areas that we really have a great deal of interest in. And that's why this SBIR was so interesting to GTS. So in terms of our motivations to participate, the money aspect is really quite small, um, but the money aspect is very important because it focuses minds and it uh, creates a legal framework for us to develop the project. And really it creates a very different atmosphere to something that would be an unpaid for demo or something like that. And if you're looking to create new solutions, it's really very important to have, um, to have that kind of focus on the project. We were also very interested in working with domain experts and Ireland is very fortunate in that it has a lot of domain expertise. Francesco from UCD is a, an expert in smart cities. You have um, Hugh from Leaper Bike, who's a, an expert in shared vehicles. So we were very uh, interested in, in getting to collaborate with those uh, domain experts. And another really big motivator for us was the opportunity to do real world tests with municipalities. Municipalities are the future of mobility. They literally own the roads. They say who gets to operate on them and in what circumstances. So they really are a key driver for, um, for mobility in the future. And the chance to work with a municipality that's openly pushing to drive innovation and to tackle some of the problems and show some leaderships uh, in the field of mobility was really very much a driver for GTS in terms of our involvement with this process. So what is a smart mobility hub? It's really about using data um, to drive an optimal service. So our technology and our platform collects an awful lot of data. What days of the week are most busy? What times of the day are most busy? Um, how many bookings get made but don't actually get used? And we look at all of that data to optimize the service. So to say you need more cars or less bikes or you need to implement some demand responsive transport. And it basically allows us to tune the service to most meet the needs of an organization um, and to scale it and have that flexibility that even as things change across a year, be for seasonal reasons or for something like COVID, you can taper and tailor the service to the needs of the organization. In practical terms, how it works is that staff register via mobile apps. They're approved by management. They can then book a bike, an e-bike, an e-car, depending on their needs and the distance they need to travel. There's lots of circumstances where an e-bike will get you around Dublin quicker than a car. Um, through the system, vehicle utilization can be tracked, carbon reduction and user behavior can be calculated. And we're also working on that with uh, UCD and Smart Dublin as well. And for us, and I think for all of our partners on this project, we have some key goals and they would be to have less parking problems, less congestion, less costs, less pollution, and improved staff mobility. And that's what we're always coming back to. So all this work on fleet optimization is really about um, trying to reduce the capital cost. So if you can make it more efficient for people to get around the city, this, the, the councils don't have to have as many cars in their fleet. They don't have to have those ongoing costs. Um, but you also remove the congestion and the pollution. And so these are the kind of drivers that we're really focusing on uh, in, this, in this call. And I should say that a smart mobility hub can work for any organization at any scale. Um, in this project, we're working with sites that have small offices, less than 50 people, medium offices, more than, more than 500 people, um, large offices, more than 1,000 people. And in conjunction with UCD and Smart Dublin, we're testing and analyzing the optimum fleet configurations for those different types and sizes of organizations. And one of the outputs of this project will be a playbook for organizations, and that will have advice on legal requirements on insurance, on data protection, but it will also have advice on optimal fleet configurations, which will give people a really great starting point in terms of how they plan and budget the rollout of a smart mobility hub. So I guess a question that we often consider is how can a smart mobility hub have impact in the wider world? And I guess what a smart mobility hub is really about is removing an individual's need for their private car when they're at work. So when you're at work, you can have confidence that there will be a shared car or a shared bike or a shared e-bike available to you to go about your business during the day. But there's obviously more to a city and, and life than that. And you need smart mobility hubs to be part of a wider picture. So that involves good public transport, 
so to get people to and from work and to get people around in their lives involves bike lanes it involves a shared vehicle infrastructure so the likes of uco the likes of Leaper, the likes of moby who make it so that people in their private lives don't need a car either and then good planning so that you're looking at the idea of 15 minute cities because the name of the game here is taking is reducing the number of private cars owned by uh, citizens of a city and on the streets of the city that's how you reduce congestion that's how you reduce the carbon impact and that's how you make um transit more cost effective for a citizen so that they don't have to spend so much they don't have to have a car and have all the costs that are associated with that because this infrastructure is right <clears throat> i should say that ireland is in a really really great place to drive innovation in this space um ucd trinity college they have great expertise in the field of smart uh, cities and in the field of mobility and in science foundation ireland and enterprise ireland we have funders who are prepared to take risks who are willing to back innovation and that's really important to drive these, these things to a more integrated level. We also have a lot of local expertise. On this project, we have Nifty Business, we have Nissan Ireland, we also have Beeper Bike, but more widely in Dublin, we have GoCar, we have Yuko, we have Moby. They are all public shared vehicle uh, operations, but they're quite unique in that they're all headquartered in Dublin. Normally, internationally, you will have a multinational organization come in and provide shared vehicle services, and all that knowledge and insight goes back to Silicon Valley. Whereas here you can get all of these people in a room to drive innovation forward and to drive a kind of cohesive approach to uh, our city and our country in the way we deal with transport. So for GTS, how we would see smart mobility hubs developing in the future is that you have a network of these hubs right across the city, along with a network of good public transport, a network of bike lanes, a network of shared vehicles. And it's all driven by technology and data to kind of funnel into good planning to make sure that citizens can get by on active transport and they don't need to have private vehicles and they can do their work job and their, their private lives can all operate um, in a more environmentally friendly way. Thank you. That's great, Richard. Thanks so much, and I love your vision. It's, uh, I mean, it's definitely where we need to go. And I suppose it's one step at a time. And I see this project as a really important project for how we can in i suppose inspire others uh, to join join our journey and uh, which which is something that we're all very passionate about i mean in terms of your experience of of, of working with us now you have to say really nice things um <laughs> and, the, and 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 i suppose the support from enterprise ireland i mean what what has that done for you in terms of has it helped you internationally having yeah, I mean, absolutely uh we've pitched for what well, we have uh customers in north america who won't allow us to say their names but there are large cities in north america who um the fact that we were already working with a city in europe i mean monkey see monkey view that's just life so having reference customers really makes a big difference and the fact that the kinds of challenges um that uh, a dublin city municipality has are mirrored by other organizations all over the world um, it, it's um so in solving these challenges we're solving them for all of our customers globally we're a SaaS product so as soon as we add a feature when we add um e-bikes and bikes onto our platform there for you guys that got rolled out to everybody everywhere um so that really adds to the strength of the project um from our perspective it really is about the innovation yeah and, and the piece i really like about you know, what we're innovating on as well is that you know when we first started thinking about mobility hubs in, in local authorities it was was this idea that we had to own the car or we had to own the bikes whereas what we've built working with you guys is a really open system where you can actually work with companies like nifty and bleeper where you know you can turn up or turn down the capacity mm. as, as a service type offering so you've got a flexibility there um based on demand and you know requirements um maybe seasonal or different things like that so the, the software and the algorithms that you're building in the background there's some real smart stuff going on there you might just say uh, that's some of the real innovation isn't it yeah i think um it's very important to have flexibility because every organization has a, a different uh different need so when you're looking at um algorithms to kind of maximize bookings so that you try and stack cars on the minimum number but then you obviously have to take into account um most of these innovations that are involving ev charging so you have to work out how you tolerate uh, to make sure that, that the batteries are, are there so somebody doesn't just book a car, but they book a car that has the, the fuel to go when they need to. So all of those kind of challenges, getting to work on them in the real world is really great because there's one thing modeling something, there's a whole different thing when you can test it. And also when you can test it and it's 500 meters down the road to go meet the person who has a problem is a great uh, advantage for us. Just having 
test cases in our city makes a big difference for GTS. Absolutely. And, and just, I suppose, to highlight the fact that, you know, this isn't just a concept, the phase two of this project, we're rolling out across multiple sites mm -hmm. within Dublin City Council, within Fingal. We're talking about, I think, about between four and six e-cars, 30 to 40 e-bikes, a couple of e-cargo bikes. So, you know, working with the fire brigade, working with different sites across Dublin City Council. So this is very much real and going live um, in the next, uh, the next, well, once we get back into the workplace. So obviously we're, we're trying to manage, you know, the whole, I suppose, COVID and return to work. But one thing that, that really excites me is that as we rethink the future of the workplace, this absolutely has to be part of that new model. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it has to meet um, flexibility is the key for, for mm. all of this. You can see it in COVID. We don't know what um, the future is going to hold for the workplace. We don't know how many people are going to be in or how many people are going to be out. So being able to track use over time in real time and view that on a weekly or monthly basis and go, actually, we can afford to have less vehicles at the moment. Or, or will we know that every summer people drop off and they work from home? So we just need to, to have less of those at that time. It allows you adapt and uh, I think adaptation is going to be the norm going forward after after yeah. COVID. Absolutely and thanks so much Richard and it's a pleasure working with yourself and you know good travel software and you know the work you do internationally is a real inspiration and we're just delighted you know that you're able to bring some of that expertise and work with us on, on this project so really um, look forward to the next phase of the project. So the, ne the next phase of the, the session today we've got, we've got a panel session and we talked about collaboration and all our partners so I'm just going to invite the panelists uh, to turn on their cameras and, and to join and uh, I suppose get their perspective uh, on the project and hear a little bit about uh, some of the different aspects that we're thinking about in terms of the next phase uh, of the project so if we can get all the panelists up I think we've got uh, we've got Ashleen from Fingal, Francesco uh, from from UCD um, I think we should have Trevor as well as Trevor there uh, Hi, from Jamie. six or from uh, Nifty Business. Hi, Jamie. How, how are you? How are you getting on? That's great. So what I'm going to do, and Hugh as well, is you there, Hugh Cooney from yeah. Paper? Yeah, I'm here. Fantastic. Great stuff. So so listen, I'm going to just introduce the panelists or let them introduce themselves. And uh, I suppose just ask you in terms of what inspired you to, I suppose, participate in the project and uh, maybe just get your perspective in terms of where you see this. Uh, this concept going and, and and maybe the next the next phase so i suppose you i can see you on the screen there so uh, i i love uh, what you guys have done over the last couple of years obviously we work very closely um i note that the bleeper bikes are nicely branded blue um at the moment which is uh, which is pretty cool it's part of climate week and uh, yeah what you've achieved is just uh, phenomenal in terms of trips and, and scale so i'm gonna hand over to you and uh, maybe give your perspective on the project and a little bit of an introduction to bleeper yeah, uh, thank you very much, Jamie. So uh, very quickly, the background of Bleeper, we started off in 2017 as operating stationless bikes uh, across Dublin. Um, Dublin city uh, centre is our, our busiest area. And the skills we've, we've built up as a company um, with uh, the, the on-street bikes in terms of uh, hands-on skills of, of keeping the bikes in good condition, also the behind the scenes work on, on the connectivity and the data and the bikes. Um, we were always looking for other opportunities of, of areas of business to get, get into stationless bike serves, uh, primarily people who are on their way to work or on their way home um, or people going a leisurely cycle. Um, it's probably not the perfect solution for people uh, in work going to meetings as and there isn't enough certainty on the availability of bikes. So when, when the uh, Smart Dublin um, Enterprise Ireland SPR was announced um, with the, the Workplace Mobility Hub, uh, we really wanted to, to um, test ourselves to be involved in a different solution. Um, you know, bikes aren't the answer to every trip across Dublin. While they are climate friendly, there are times where people need um, to take a car um, and to maximize the, um, well, to, max, to, to reduce the uh, dependency on, on car ownership and bring your own car, the, the working together um, with car companies in the, in the Mobility Hub is a unique opportunity for us to um, uh, combine what we do with what cars offer to take, to, to take more cars off the road. So it was a no brainer for us. And um, 
we've really enjoyed being part of it and uh, really believe that this is is going to play a key role of, of people. Before I set up Leaper, I worked for a large employer. So I first had experience of um, how easy it can be to get lazy about your transport choice, going to offsite meetings, etc. cetera. Um, so there's, um, you know, a bit of it is on, on the individual themselves, but a lot of it is also on the company to put solutions like smart mobility hubs in place. So um, they're not tempted to jump in a taxi for uh, every offsite meeting they, they, they might need. So um, we're delighted to, to be part of this and uh, we're looking forward to, to, to getting into phase two. That's great, Hugh. Thanks, thanks very much. And great working with you on this. Delighted to have you as a partner. And, and I suppose moving on from, I suppose the, the, I suppose the e-bikes and the bikes. Maybe Trevor, um, you're you're from Nifty Business. I, you know, obviously the electric cars. You know, the big push uh, on electric cars and clean mobility. There's a whole debate, I guess, in terms of just cars in general, in terms of mobility and ownership, and you know, what's going to happen in the future. Trevor, what's your perspective on all this? And you might give a quick introduction as well to. To your company. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, Trevor Toner is my name. I'm commercial director with uh, Nifty Business, who, as you point out, we're an Irish leasing company um, that have, are working with really Nissan Ireland to uh, to supply the vehicles in the, the smart mobility hub. Um, I think, you know, what's really interesting to us is, you know, two of our core values. One is, is about progressive and the second is about sustainability and about so giving, you know, our customers tailored solutions and the tick both those boxes. Um, so like if we we look at, at the I suppose the transition to electric vehicles first you know I think it was interesting what the Lord Mayor said is that we really do have to walk the walk and I know in our own company here uh, we, we actually retrofitted the building to with solar panels so it gives us about 40 percent of our power including uh, EV chargers and about 75 percent of, of our team here are, are driving electric vehicles um, I think you know the, the vehicles we're using in this particular pilot is the the Nissan Leaf and it's important you know there's over half a million of them on the on the road worldwide and it's you know it's really tried and tested technology so it, it's good that we have we, we we have those vehicles to use but i think the the other interesting thing is really a, is around the um the sharing economy and the usage because if we all convert to electric cars and we just leave them all parked in car parks in the dublin city center uh all day i don't think that really addresses the problem and i suppose you know it's really interesting the technology that we've seen being used here in the pilot to really get up that utilization and see and i think to uh, to the point from the bikes you know what suits you on a bike today might suit you in a car tomorrow and to give that flexibility and cross over um, to, to people I think that's a really um, uh, something that can replicate it through a lot of companies um, through, throughout large cities so we're, we're really excited to be to be involved in this Jamie. Yeah and I think what's great working with you guys is, is the flexibility of the model as well you know we talk about as a service and how you can scale up and scale down and figuring out how that will work and making it make sense for everyone so also just to acknowledge the role of Nissan in this and in particular Brian Purcell who is someone we've been working with over the years who's been talking about this 10 years ago <laughs> absolutely eventually, eventually we're starting to see it come to fruition and the technology is starting to facilitate things that you know were research papers um five or six years ago so thanks very much for, for that Trevor and we'll have a few questions uh to the panel in a couple of minutes I'd like to bring in uh, Francesco Pila and just talking about the research angle uh, Francesco leads the uh, spatial analytics uh, lab in University College uh, Dublin. But Francesco, and myself, you know, probably six, six, uh, five, six years ago, we'd be talking about wouldn't it be amazing if you could create this new type of service? You know, how could we uh, build an app and you know tie all this stuff together? It was all conceptual stuff and research yeah. papers uh, being published. It's wonderful to see how fast it's evolved, and yeah. the fact now that we're very close and there are companies now starting to offer this as a as a, as a service, but. Wow, it, it took long enough, but it's uh, it must be re very rewarding to see, Francesca, when your research papers turn into reality. Yeah, that's exactly the point, Jamie. Uh, I think uh, you, you captured you captured it very well. The that's exactly the most exciting aspect for me about uh, the smart mobility hub. So mov moving away from just uh, theoretical stuff, uh, research papers, and actually seeing seeing some real life impact happening in real life setting. So experimenting in the city, getting people to use the tools that you were thinking about, the, 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 you know, the, the, the approaches, the ideas you had, and actually see that this uh, 
uh, and measure the impact that this can, can produce. So I think uh, the most exciting aspect for me is actually, you know, having this uh, collaboration with industry and local authorities that made it possible and to deploy these, these bikes, uh, cars around the city and see if they can actually make a change in terms of, of local traffic, local pollution and behavioral change in general. Yeah, no, absolutely. And Francesco, I think one of the bit that we've been really working on over the last couple of years is how do you, you know, find having cars and bikes uh, connected, but it's really important that you get the data in terms oh, yeah. of how many trips people are taking, how long, why are they picking certain modes? And, and we've had great fun uh, working with Richard and his team in terms of how do you get the data off the car? How do you get the data off the bike? Uh, also innovating in terms of putting a smart bike lock on the bike that, you know, has a GPS built in and, and then figuring out all the software that happens behind the scenes to connect that in, uh, in real time. And then at the end of all that, Francesco, we hand it to you to do some magic. Talk about the magic that you do with that data or you're going to do with that data. Well, you see, the, the fact is that uh, the, one of the innovations uh, of this part is actually that we will be able uh, to collect uh, hyperlocal data for both uh, the, the, the e-cars and the e-bikes. So it's not just about uh, getting some some points when the, 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 the bikes and the, the data were, uh, sorry, and the, the cars were released, but actually have a lot of data about how they've been used across the day, I, what, what were the, prefer uh, the preferred routes. So a lot, an awful lot of information, which when you combine, I mean, when you start to combine it with other data like traffic flows, uh, weather, weather data and so on and so forth, it, you might be able, well, that's what we're expecting, to will, uh, that we will be able to extract uh, very valuable insights, which wouldn't be possible if we approach it only from a theoretical perspective. So yeah. I think there is a lot of value and a lot of efforts that we put in to, to make it this possible in, in, in collecting this hyperlocal data. Yeah, I think that's really important for you know, measuring the impact on climate action. So what, what was the reduction in you know, uh, car miles and what, how, much, you know, what, how much emissions did we save and what impact it, did it make? And I suppose it's also really important to acknowledge the role of Science Foundation Ireland, uh, Francesco, in, in your part of, of the project. And, Again, you know, we, we've connected not just Enterprise Ireland and everyone on this program, but you know, you were able to kind of pitch this concept in terms of real life research and impact to SFI. So, you know, as a combination, we're so powerful working together. I think, but that's it. You see, the, if you look also at a, well, a successful a projects at European level, a, the, a, one of the, the main components of the success is actually the, the, the close collaboration between industry, academia, local authorities, and, and the general public. And I think that's what we have here, and, and that's what is going to make it impactful and successful at the end. Yeah, brilliant. And listen, Francesco, great, as always, working with you, and we'll continue to support all those bids uh, to Europe and SFI. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for, for, for being part of the project and joining us today. So just the last uh, member of our panel, and I suppose bringing it back down to, you know, what impact this has at a local level and how this aligns with the needs of, of a local authority. And Ashley has been a fantastic supporter of, of this and a lot of our projects over the last couple of years. So I'm going to hand over you to Ashley Highland from Fingal to talk a little bit about her perspective. Thanks, Jamie. And um, yeah, so as Jamie said there, my name is Ashton Highland and I'm Digital Strategy Manager with Fingal County Council. And we've been involved in a number of these SBIR challenges um, for a number of years now. And with my role, I'm managing the SBIR projects and along with the internal challenge champions. And um, really the SBIR process, it, it allows us to trial and innovate um, solutions based on a challenge approach. So. Um, I suppose from a local authority perspective, it's, it's really important. And from Fingal's perspective as well, we're, we're definitely committed to supporting and driving innovation. And I find anyway, the SBIR process definitely does that. Um, through this particular SBIR project, um, it's been led by our corporate um, services. And um, I suppose the, the idea or the challenge behind this SBIR is how do we give staff multiple options, uh, multimodal options for travel if it's to and from meetings or um, going on site or something to do with their work. Um, and 
can we collect data on that to see how we can improve mobility of staff for their work? So in Fingal, we're, we're now installing uh, electric vehicles in two of our um, main offices, so in Swords and in Blanchestown. We'll have two electric, um, two electric bikes and in both car parks um, for staff, and we'll have one electric car for, for the start. And then we'll be looking at the usage of that. So that's really important for us from a from a corporate perspective to see long term, you know, looking at car parks and the use of spaces and the needs of staff and getting to and from uh, meetings or site visits um, all that information is just really important for us for a planning perspective um, so yeah we're really excited to be part of this project and then obviously it's part of our climate action objectives that we're trying to meet and the sustainability as well because it's uh, using electric so yeah we're, we're really delighted to trial and we're hoping now that staff uh, from the end of September, we'll be able to start booking these vehicles. And, and as you said, with COVID, we're now trickling back into the offices. Um, so it, it's, it's nice to have that added flexibility because I've even heard from a number of colleagues that used to have, you know, a two car household and they're now down to a one car household based on, you know, not using their car so much in the last, you know, 18 months because of COVID and them thinking okay how do i if i need to go on a site visit how do i get there you know if i use trans public transport now to get to the office so these sorts of um flexible uh mobility options for staff are really important and it's something that we're really excited to trial yeah no, thanks so much for that uh, ashley and really great to have you um such a great partner on the project and i think that's why smart dublin is so powerful because it brings together like the four Dublin local authorities, you know, one project, one partner might lead and then there's opportunities for other local authorities to come in and, and piggyback on top of the, uh, the opportunity. So, yeah, no, absolutely. And I think bringing it back to that level of reality, Ashley, and I think is really important in terms of you're right, you know, people are becoming less dependent on the car. If you haven't used the car, got rid of the second car, um, but to have these flexible options. And I, I think it should be every workplace. Um, it should be mandated that these, these type of options are available for staff. It should be part of their CSR programs, their sustainable mobility programs, their bit to address climate action. So really excited about where this could go and how this could scale up. So I might just uh, put a question, actually, thanks, Ashley, for that to Trevor. I mean, Trevor, as a, I suppose you're in an interesting space at Nifty Business because, you know, the, the shift from car ownership to maybe as a service is something that, that that's really interesting and you know we've heard a lot about young people not getting driving tests and you know not driving as much where, where do you see it? i mean you must be strategizing about this and thinking about well where do we fit into this future and how do we work with the car companies to create a model that works because you know you can't be losing money on this business yeah i think i read that somewhere jamie the, that's one of our core values as well is not to lose money um but um yeah, you're right i think the you know mobility is the the lines are getting very blurred as i say between say typically what the how the car manufacturer would you know uh, sell a vehicle how um leasing companies how rental companies so this sort of you know mobility as a service and i think you know the consumption model um and you know we look at sort of younger people today and the way they've sort of probably being conditioned in relation to sort of how to use phones and stuff like that and it's all around monthly pay and and flexibility i think that is that is definitely the way forward and and we're we're finding more and more companies want to have these flexible options and um, that okay there's there's people that require a car for their day-to-day -day work because they're out in the road selling or they're delivering but it's how do you sort of be a little bit more innovative and sustainable around people who don't need the car all the time and i think that's where, where the technology piece comes in because there needs to be um i suppose a reliability here that you know that when the person goes whether it be sort of ashling one of Ashling's colleagues going for the meeting that you know the car is there the car is charged it's ready to go because you, you sort of get you know an initial buy-in from people and, and if it doesn't work that that's where there, there's challenges so but i see we've seen great um uh, obviously um improvements in the vehicle range and um, so that sort of range anxiety and stuff the need for cars to be charged you know the, the the speed that they can be charged at and stuff like that so so i think these things are getting very much more into the into the real space as opposed to the, the theoretical which you, you spoke about earlier you know 
you know, absolutely. And these are the type of things that we're trying to figure out as a group and, you know, try to think about what these new models look like. But I think guys, I'd really uh, just like to thank the panel for your insights. I, I felt like it flowed really well. Like it was really inspiring to hear about what you're all doing, how you're contributing to the project. And, you know, for me, you know, next year, it's about how do we scale this up? How could every workplace have this type of service? And it should be seamless. It should be just, I can get this in in a week or two. Um, maybe if you have to put in a few electric charging points, that could take a bit longer. But, <laughs> but you know, I, I could have this in pretty quickly and this could be a really valuable offering uh, to, to my staff and to my organization. So thanks guys, really great panel. Um, really excited to continue progress working with you over the next six to eight months and getting you know, getting that research done, measuring the impact. And, and really just to finish up the session, I'm gonna hand over to um, Yvonne Pierce. And you know, with any project like this, there's someone behind the scenes making it all work, bringing everyone together and ensuring success. And, and Yvonne is that person who's just been working super hard behind the background um, to bring this to a reality and to make sure that it's something that we can all be proud of and something that you know can scale and something that can deliver real impact as the Lord Mayor has suggested. So I'm gonna hand over to Yvonne and Yvonne, maybe just talk about next steps and your perspective on the project and then maybe close out the, the webinar. I will, thank you, Jamie. So hello everyone, my name is Yvonne, as Jamie mentioned. So I'm involved in supporting the rollout of this project, but also um, I'm a member of the Smart Dublin team. So I kind of have that dual perspective. Uh, before we wrap up, as Jamie said, I just want to elaborate a little bit on how the next uh, six months or so is going to go. So as Paul mentioned, we are going into phase two of the project, which is really all about prototype development. So during that period, it's all about expanding the pilot and refining the program. And I suppose the purpose of that is so that we can both uh, better understand how it works and all, but also prepare to grow this, prepare to scale this. I mean, ultimately, that's what we want. Uh, it's not to, to, to finish uh, once phase two is over. So we are working very, very hard for that. Part of that is that we want to catalog essentially what we are learning um, as we go. Um, and we want to make sure that we are sharing that with other people who might be interested in doing something similar. So as part of that, uh, Richard mentioned, we are preparing a playbook. Um, and that's something that we are going to be working on over the coming months uh, with our partners, with other stakeholders. Um, and that is something that we will make freely available and accessible and we are going to do a lot of engagement around that once it's prepared so i uh, just want to have that on people's radar so that's something that's going to be coming down the line in advance of that i'm sure there are lots of people on this call today who are very very interested in some of the things that you heard about so be it a smart mobility hub or a certain type of program within your own office um or you just want to advocate for this type of program because you realize how important it is um and i would actively encourage you to reach out to me um to get in touch at any stage, um, my email address is yvonne.pierce at smartdublin.ie. Um, we are going to follow up with an email after this session, with a recording of the session for you to share. Um, and also I'll just make sure that you have my email as part of that. Um, so, and there will be, I know there, there might've been a couple of questions and answers that we didn't get to today. So we will make sure to cover those as part of the email that we send out. Uh, so you will be hearing from us. Um, in terms of wrapping up the session, um i can say a few thank yous jamie you might want to do that yourself <laughs> okay <laughs> um so first of all I, I would like to thank our lord mayor i mean we are so 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 delighted to have her here today and to have her support on this program and recognition for it can't thank her enough for taking the time out for a very busy schedule um i would like to thank paul everyone of enterprise ireland and the sbir program who have made this happen um and have been supporting us all the way along Francesco, everyone at UCD, Science Foundation Ireland, again, providing that kind of data that makes all of this, gives up this, this project its robustness. Um, so to actually, to thank Francesco for, for being so hands-on. Of course, our partners, um, so we obviously have Nifty, Nissan, GTS, and Bleeper. Um, I think I meet with the guys every week, at least once, I'd say they're sick of hearing from me. Uh, so they are hands-on partners. This is a true collaboration, um, and I, we really couldn't do it without them. Uh, to Jamie, I mean, Jamie's uh, the leader of the pack and, uh, you know, constant entrepreneur, uh, always pushing the boundaries in terms of the scope of the project, which uh, 
is great and painful at the same time. So thank you, Jamie, for that. Um, and finally, I think most importantly, I would like to say thank you to our partner council, Fingal. Um, we've had huge support as well from South Dublin and Dunleary, so I want to thank them as well. This wouldn't happen without participating staff. And also there are so, so, so many staff within the councils that are making this happen. It's everyone from facilities to comms to, to senior management. You know, there's huge support across the board for this. Um, and that's the way to run a successful pilot. You know, it's about their engagement. It's about them telling us what works, what doesn't, how you could make it better for them. Um, and that is what we care about. So to the staff who've signed up, who've used it and who are going to use it over the next six months, um, I just thank you so much and for staff who might be here today. So I think we'll sign off there. We didn't want to leave it too long. There's been lots and lots of uh, events on as part of Climate Action Week this week. We're obviously delighted that this is, this is one of them. Um, everyone's probably hungry for lunch. So I'm going to sign off. Um, like I said, I expect an email. Thank you everyone for attending today, for taking the time to be here. We had a good, great attendance. So I'm delighted to see that. And thank you to all our speakers. Thanks very much. <laughs>